Open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. Try to squeak out some episodes here before they uh, put in this soft stay-at-home order. It's very, very soft. I actually saw on a Facebook page I'm a member of because I have an ATV. Yeah. And uh, they're all sitting there saying, it's like, oh, we're going to go do some social distancing this weekend. Who wants to join and everything? I'm like, can you really do that? You know, I thought we were supposed to stay home, you know, and not really go anywhere except go to the store and stuff. What I pictured, because I didn't listen to the to the announcement. Yeah. What I pictured was very hard, you know, don't leave your house unless you absolutely have to. Well, I find out that you can go to parks, you can go anywhere you want, really. Uh, you just have to stay six feet away from people and try not to go places. Yeah. So there's like a whole shit ton of people on this Facebook page that are going to go four-wheeling this weekend. And I'm really tempted to join them, except it's supposed to rain. And well, I don't imagine riding a four-wheeler in rain's fun. Yeah, well, here's the thing about that. It sounds like our governor has a step-by-step initiative planned where he's going to keep increasing the level of... Uh, Oh, what's the word I want to control over the population and that this soft stay at home, if people abuse it like that, he will immediately go into a three week long fucking hard lockdown. Yeah, that's how they usually take away your freedom is they slowly ebb away at it little by little. I question why they didn't just do a one time across the board federal lockdown. I like you notice that Trump went from having a very laissez faire attitude about it to taking it somewhat more serious, and now he's already kind of walked back on that sobering sense, and uh, he's kind of mocking this, like, well, in a few more weeks, we got to open everything back up and jumpstart the economy. Well, he's hoping to. He's not saying we're going to. You know, he's staying positive about how quickly this can be over. My guess is two months. Things might finally be back to normal. You hope. Yeah, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm not an expert or anything. But... I mean, yeah, from what I understand, it was an article I read earlier that his, you know, his, one of the, his advisors is saying, you know, we, we talked to him, he's receptive about it, you know, but he does remain hopeful that maybe this will pass sooner than, than people are predicting, you know? Right. Well, one thing is that I've still been working, you've still been working. Starting Monday, they told us, don't come to the office unless you absolutely have to do something you can't do from home, otherwise work from home. And now they've got these calendars and these... uh chat groups in Microsoft Teams that we're supposed to use to put our hours we're going to work on the calendar so they know what we're doing. And if we don't have enough to do, we have to take PTO, Hmm. which sucks. Because, I mean, they're the ones that are telling us we can't work. There's shit we could do if we could go to the office. But to be told, well, you'll have to take PTO. I'm not responsible for there not being enough shit at my disposal. Everybody else is. It's the group homes that say no visitors. It's the nursing homes that say no one can come. I've still been visiting my clients when I can, the last few. Mm-hmm. But I'm doing it outside at a distance of 6 to 10 feet. They're up in the air about what my job's going to be doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what my job is. So, yeah, working on the road. Um, yeah. Uh, so we're getting actually into our busy season where we need to start being on the road and basically painting the roads. I mean, striping and everything. And as of right now, we're we're learning things day by day, whether or not we're going to be there. And there's a lot of guys hoping, well, if they do shut us down, you know, can we tap into our EMB because it's something that's beyond our control? Die, but you got to burn like 40 hours of your paid time off before you can get your EMB, I would thought. Yeah, you'd have to. And some of the guys are thinking, well, maybe they'll waive that. And I was like, they're not going to waive that. They're not. Will I be working next week? I have no idea. Well, the last few people I saw, I saw via phone video conference. The Department of uh, Human Services has allowed social workers now to meet with clients via online video conferencing applications. Uh, that must be annoying. The downside is is that if I normally go see a client, let's say yeah, I spend 15 to 25 minutes talking to them, well, I can sandwich that with travel time on either end, and it builds up my time 
that we charge these counties that these cases come from. So it's it's more billable hours for me mm-hmm. to make my time more worth it for the company. Instead of, you know, that being an hour, now I have 18 to 24 minutes. And I'm seeing my billable hours start to slide, and it's like, fuck, trying to keep busy. Yeah, and actually, one thing that might come out of all this in regards to stuff like that is you might see more people being told work from home and probably getting fewer hours because the companies are going to realize, government agencies, companies, whatever, are going to realize that they can do this stuff a little bit cheaper by doing things certain ways. Oh, always. It'll, you know, I mean, it's the possibilities of what can happen are pretty wide open right now. Well, if government agencies are smart, they won't, uh, when things get, quote, back to normal, they won't try to... uh, keep these new cost-saving measures with their employees. And if they do, I plead with any government agency a mass walkout of employees saying you are not going to fuck us out of time and money and benefits. I don't... I know I they include a government in it. I know I include a government in it, but I have a hard time seeing government being smart with their money like that. All right, I, I, mean, I mean, you've worked for a government. I currently work for one. Not the greatest when it comes to managing money, you know? No. I mean, some are better than others. I mean, my area, uh-huh. I, I think it's actually pretty good for the most part. Versus um, like Minlars, that was a fucking steaming dumpster fire mm-hmm, of yeah. you know, tens of millions of wasted dollars. You know, and it, it depends on what level of government, too. Like a state or a federal government, extremely wasteful. More, I, I find that most of your more your local government, cities, counties, and stuff like townships especially, they can usually stretch a dollar pretty good. I mean, depends. Yeah. Well, none of that relates to what you wanted to uh, discuss directly. No, yeah. But that plays into the point, the overarching theme is, how long is this going to go on? And you texted me today and said, have you paid attention to the way that certain uh, infection and death toll rate projections have been walked back now? Well, it wasn't a bunch of it. It was one in particular by uh, Epidemiologist or whatever the hell that is. Epidemiologist, or epidemiologist. E- epidemic, all whatever. Epidemiologist uh, from Britain who was claiming that there was going to be five hundred thousand deaths in Britain, and, two and million the U.S. Here. could see two point two million deaths from this virus. It's a lot of grandmas not making it to Thanksgiving yeah. and Christmas. And that was the platform, I guess, or the study that was went, went viral. And everybody's looking at it. I know that the article I read that Britain decided to use that to determine how they wanted to handle the coronavirus. I'm sure some of that swayed people and politicians here in the U.S., if not worldwide. And that article today is saying, well, he wrote that chart and he came out today and said, it's wrong. And he stepped everything back. It went from 500,000 deaths to maybe 20,000 deaths in Europe hmm. or and in Britain alone. And he says... And it's probably most likely to be much less than that. Because even though the virus is spreading fast, the amount of people affected by it isn't as high as they were saying. I, remember, I mean, people are catching it, but I guess a lot of people aren't even showing symptoms. I remember the original projections I saw for the U.S. were 96 million infected, 500,000 deaths. I don't think it'll be that high. Well, no. I mean, here in Minnesota, what it's been... Two deaths. Two deaths. So far. From the day it got here, which we don't even know when it got here. But the number of cases has been growing exponentially. However, big caveat, there's not enough testing kits. They've refused testing a shit ton of people. And by the time they have the kits to test them, these people will have gotten better, not known if they've had it, probably not going to get tested to see if they have antibodies after the fact. They're working on that, though. they won't get counted in the overall numbers. They, they may at some point... One of the other discussions that my coworkers were talking about is, well, it wasn't well. Okay, they were ta- they were discussing how scientists are trying to figure out how to test for the antibodies to see if somebody did have it, so they can go back. Even if I go to the doctor six months from now and be like, "You did have it." Okay, we can add to the tally. This person had it, wasn't hospitalized. This is the age group and everything like that, so they can keep track of what this virus does. Um, I would wonder if they but, would actually go to all the trouble of wasting all those test kits and supplies 
just to kind of get the actual figure. I would think they would because there's going to be a political motivation behind it. Go on. Now, well, let me. I want to back up a little bit. Okay. So, how many cases we have here in Minnesota? Was it 186 or 1296? 326. Is it up to 326 now? I know the number went up since Monday. It's been going up. It's been bit. going up. The number of people who have recovered from it is are currently standing at 120. And that's for people they know who had it mm-hmm. and have recovered from it. So here's my question. I don't know if you know this or not. I don't know. So of that three, whatever, that 120, do we subtract that 120 because they no longer have it? Because it sounds like, well, you have people who have gotten it, but they're not saying how many currently have it. I would say you need to... Uh widen the number of categories that you report to suspected cases, confirmed cases, recovered cases, deaths. You need to throw that extra stat in. Now it gets to be like baseball. If you like stats, baseball is your sport (laughs) because there are fucking retarded ass numbers of stats. Like, well, the number of doubles that he's had off of left-handed pitchers in Seventh inning stretches or whatever the fuck. They just fucking throw all this shit at the Mm. wall so that it boils down to like the smallest nanobite of information. Going back to the testing thing. The reason why not everybody's being tested, people turn away. Because so far, uh, it has been mainly the U.S. government, the CDC, that has been doing all the testing. And they have a very narrow band which they want to test. Right. They have since, and this is last week I was reading this. They're expanding it. They're trying to get test kits available to private medical facilities so that we can test faster, which is exactly what happened in Italy and uh, China. Is It was only the government allowed to test because over there they have government-controlled health care. Um, so they weren't even allowing private citizens to test. And if you want to go even further than that, the number of deaths in Italy are so high because they're not treating anybody 60 or older. Yeah, it started with anybody 80. And then it went to 60. Then it went to 60 because they were so overwhelmed like, well, with critical cases. You know, you're 60 years old. You've had a good run, and we just don't have the the facilities to take care of you. So I hope you liked your government medicine and go die now in peace. Yeah, now Grandma, Grandpa, and Uncle Rico aren't coming to Thanksgiving. That's okay, because Uncle Rico's an asshole. He looks at the knees kind of weird. What? I don't know Uncle Rico. <laughs> okay, well, that was a reference to Napoleon Dynamite. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uncle Rico. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that movie but the one time. Well, we talked about this the other night before you left, after we recorded a different episode, about the difference between, you know, government-sponsored health care and, and private health care. And I am of the mindset that I hate these goddamn private uh, health care groups that seem like all they care about is profit. And just churning out person after person after person. I mean, look at the hospitals these days. I know you don't go to the hospital. I don't have to. I never get sick. Well, I mean, for anybody else you know also. I go to hospitals all the time because my clients get sick. They fall. Injuries, this, that, and the other. Seizures and falls. All kinds of shit. I can tell you it is a fucking assembly line to get them in the door and then out the door as fast as possible. Well, they want to keep beds open for more severe cases. But what maybe, our discussion was... Or maybe they want the most bang for their buck. But we talked about, uh, mainly, I have said years ago, Obama made the comment, we need to stop looking at coming up with treatments and we need to start coming up with more with cures. cures. Yeah. Which I said is controlled by Big Pharma. They're in all the doctor's pockets. They're throwing kickbacks to people. It Medicine is not going to gravitate towards the mindset that he had. Because all the big uh, pharmaceutical groups make so much money off these treatments that they develop and patent. And then, you know, they got seven years to make up that R&D money charging an arm and a leg. You don't have to look any more past, uh, you don't have to look any further than, say, Martin Shkreli, the pharma bro, who became the head of a company and then raised the price on a fucking HIV drug. I think it was like 5,000% to $1,500 per pill. Just... Because it's all money. I mean, look at the companies that came up with OxyContin. They made somewhere between 10 and $13 billion off of these fucking opioid-based painkillers. They're not going to change. And that's a big reason why 
so few of these politicians that are backed by major pharmaceutical companies making campaign contributions are not for medicinal marijuana research and the passing of that in their states, let alone recreational marijuana, because they know it's going to cut into the profits of these companies that throw them money for their campaigns, and they want to stay in power. They don't really care. They just want to keep living that sweet life with the health care and the protection and the U.S. paid for company car and all that shit. That's why it's not going to happen. Yeah, and my argument against that was is I don't think you hate the medical system we currently have. You no. just hate the pharmaceutical companies. And I actually agree with you. The pharmaceutical companies are there to make money. As much as they were trying to say we're trying to help people, yeah, they want to help people, but they also know they can make a pretty penny doing so. I'm going to correct your vernacular. I won't say that I hate them. I will say I'm dubious of their intentions because how do you trust a company that seems to be so profit-minded when they say, oh, here's this next big thing that we're going to help you with. But suddenly they come up with a new drug because the patent wears out on the old one and they can't make as much money off it because the generics are going to come out and they're not going to make that fucking hand over fist cash off of whatever antidepressant they came up with 10 years ago, three years of development and research approved in seven years of top dollar billing before the patent runs out, oh, suddenly we've got this brand new antidepressant that's better than the last one, and we've got seven more years of bringing in that big fucking cash. And how that relates to the coronavirus thing going on right now, the coronavirus pandemic going on right now, is everybody's racing to try to figure out how to make a vaccine. Now, honestly, right now, there's not enough knowledge for any one person to corner the market and make it profitable. They're all just throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. And they're starting to do some tests with old malaria drugs like hydrochloroquine. Yeah, malaria and stuff like that. And at first I'm like, oh, hey, that's cool. That sounds promising. And then you heard the other day that there's an old couple that they tested it on. And the guy died and the woman's critical. Uh, No, uh, you're misunderstanding that story. That wasn't because they tested it on them. Those people saw that same chemical is in the fish tank stuff that you could put. Yeah. That wasn't like, here's a pill that'll help you. They went and... They're ate, testing they, it, yeah. No. They're testing. That's how they got this drug, is they're they're trying an old malaria they're drug. They're trying an old malaria drug, but these old people went to a, a fish aquarium shop and bought the stuff. It's supposed to eliminate the algae in your tank or something like that, and ate it. Uh, hold on. We're going to fact check That's the story I that. was told. We're going to... Told by who? Let's fact check that, because that's the story that I was told. These people ate the... Took these pills. He died... Or is it she died? One died and one's almost dead. Husband and wife poisoned themselves trying to... Oh, well, there we go. Chloroquine phosphate. Jesus Christ. Boy, K-Fan wasn't reporting that wrinkle in the story. No, of course they're not. Because it's fucking K-Fan. Well, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? It's fucking sports channel, man. All they know is stats. K-Fan actually covers a lot more than sports. Wanker doodle. You don't listen to the Bumper to Bumper program. I don't listen to K-Fan. Yeah. That... I'm pissed off because they took over 103.5, and that used to be KTLK. And I like listening to KTLK. K-Fan's 100.3. That's the... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's what... K-Talk got bumped to 103.5. K got 103.5, yeah. And that's a shitty fucking station. I can't hear anywhere up in this area. Try turning on your radio, Timothy. KTLK is readily available in most cars via the FM band. Yeah, so when I heard that the other day that these people, and they didn't mention the part and maybe hadn't come out yet that they self-medicated with this, but uh, I went to work and uh, a woman that works at the front desk, she's elderly, her husband's elderly, obviously, and I forget whatever condition he has that he takes that shit or has taken that shit in the past and it's helped him. And I'm like, oh, good. Maybe we're on the cusp of a breakthrough here. And then you hear about these people. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, yeah, what these people didn't take into consideration is the other chemicals that are in that pill they ate. <laughs> well, it's just like, um, was it Coumadin that has fucking rat poison in it? What blood uh, thinner is it? Uh, I, I'm i not sure, but I know my, my Mrs. Number One fan takes Coumadin. Hold on. I wouldn't be surprised if it's got it in there. Blood thinner. It's like smoking rat cigarettes. Poison. I mean, you know, roll your Coumadin. own. Coumadin. Warfarin. Both of them have fucking rat poison in them. And then you just think, Jesus Christ, what kind of weird diabolical shit are they going to find out? Now, is out? it all the chemical makeup of rat poison or just one ingredient in rat poison? 
It because must be enough like to relate to the, it. In the proper dose, is not bad for you? It's not great, but it's not going to harm you. Yeah, what the hell do they come up with Viagra for? And they're like, hey, everybody's getting wicked boners. That was supposed, wasn't that supposed to be some kind of heart medication? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Blood well, pressure it doesn't work for like, your heart, but God damn it. <laughs> it makes your pulse race. Boy, I feel like shit, but I could probably fuck my way through a brick wall right now. Saddle up. Wife's not here and the dog's here. Mm-hmm. Rover. It's not cheating because it's your dog. Right, right. Road trip. <laughs> DJ Qualls. Good reference. So with these projections changing, and holy Christ, how's this already been 20 minutes? You have to wonder, and this goes back to the beginning where we're talking about all the shit shut down, how long is it going to be shut down? Is it worth it that we shut all this shit down, that we're crippling the economy, that millions of people that rely on hourly wage jobs and tips, and you could say, should have got a different job. Well, that could be any fucking No, I'm not going to say that. Okay? Everybody makes money how they want to make money. Right. Waitressing is a a good, profitable job. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with my sister-in-law. Being a bartender, she makes mad fucking money in tips. I'm actually kind of jealous. She makes more than I do. Um, but is it worth it? No, it's not. It's not worth it. Because they had the scare tactic death projections. Yep. And, and everyone's like, oh my god, we need to fucking lock down in our houses. Everybody quick. If it was a situation where more people were critically ill from this, if, if it was, say, like it was 20% of the people that get it end up hospitalized... I can see this being a necessary precaution. But since the people that get hospitalized is less than 1% of the fucking population, it is not worth it at all. This is why I think this is... I can't say it's politically motivated, but it, you know, going into conspiracy theory territory here, Mm -hmm. as I was talking to you earlier, Mm -hmm. there is something behind this. What its purpose is, one of it could be Democrats are pissed off at Trump. He was doing really well. The economy was fucking roaring. Whatever reason whoa, 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 is, whoa, 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 it was roaring. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I will give you all the stuff you said about the economy, but I refuse to say he was doing a good job. Like I said, whether it was him or not, I'm just saying. He's yeah. the one in charge right now. He's the one that's getting the credit. Okay? They want to take him down. They're pissed off because they couldn't impeach him. So, one, it could be a political. It's like every time there's an election, whether it's a you know, no matter who's running, there's a major virus. Okay, I saw this tracked out. There's a virus scare of some kind somewhere in the world. Almost every year there's an election. Well, there's probably a virus scare almost every year, but you'd have to look at SARS was 03, uh, swine flu was 2011, and MERS was what year? I don't I remember. can't remember specifically the years, but it was all election years or going into an election year well if you're gonna go conspiracy theories joey black says that every time that there's an american terrorist issue that the patriots win the super bowl but tom brady (laughs) now plays in tampa bay so we won't be seeing any more wicked sweet touchdown throws and then he gets to raise the lombardi trophy mark Wahlberg is the greatest actor of our time where the hell have i heard that before (laughs) <laughs> Anywhere in South Boston, fucking assholes. <laughs> yes, that's what that's that um, I, I, Before you go any further, I just want to say, what if there is a rogue sect of Democrats that want this to go the way that it is so they don't have to elect either Biden or Sanders? And they're just that, like, you know, that could be a possibility, Fuck too. it, burn it to the ground, give us four more fucking years of Trump, whatever, suck a bag of dicks. I honestly think that's what the Democrats are doing, because they put Biden up there, and he actually started out somewhat strong, but as he's continuing to campaign, have you watched the videos about how he's speaking? No, because I mean, he's not going to win. No Democrat's no, going to win. No Democrat's going to win. So they're just like, okay, we got to take Trump for four more years. Couldn't impeach him. They're hoping maybe... And again, conspiracy theory, I don't know if I 100% believe it myself, that maybe this virus thing, people will remember it at the voting and vote. We're going to vote for a Democrat. The other thing I think it is, is it could have been something not so much politically driven, but worldwide. Like, hey, U.S. is getting kind of hot shoddy and cocky again. Why don't we bring their thing down, get their economy slowing down. Take them down a peg. And bring them down here with the rest of us. So this virus spreads around. And they took, we took lead from what other countries were doing, you know, shutting down, restricting travel, stuff like that. That's a great way to destroy an economy. Most of the economies that are doing this are already fucked anyways. I mean, uh, but we were doing good and this is going to screw us over. That's interesting. But I think we'll recover from it quickly. Did Trump copy the lead of others because he's not an experienced politician? 
And wouldn't you think that an experienced businessman would know other ways to not fuck the economy? Or is he powerless? At this point in time, it seems like he's powerless because it is the, the Senate and the House of Representatives that are, this is what we're doing. He is listening to his advisors, and his advisors are telling him this is what we should probably do. I think his strategy isn't so much how do I keep it from tanking. I think his strategy is leaning more towards how do I get it back on track once this is done and over with. Well, it's just going to have to happen on its own where people go back to work and people go back to Exactly, out. which is why I think he's, he's hoping, he's hopeful that it will be over within the next month. He's saying hopefully by Easter. I don't know when Easter even is this year. April so. something or other. I, isn't it like towards the end of April this no, time around? No, it's like April 12th or some shit. Okay. Like that. I don't it's see it early. being done by April 12th. No. I'm thinking probably mid to end of May. That's my personal don't thought. Don't say end of May. Fucking shit. Why? Because I'm already not getting to see the goddamn NHL playoffs. Oh. And the wrestling shows are all fucked. And it, so much other stuff is fucked. I'm kind of fine with it because it gives me more time to heal before I return to Airsoft. <laughs> It's all about you, isn't it? Yeah. I would just like to say before we wrap this up, uh, going forward, can we please start referring to the Senate and the House of Representatives as the Capitol Hildos? Ooh, I like that. I'm coining Capitol that. Capitol Hildos. I probably heard it somewhere else. I don't fucking know. It just came to me while you are saying, I'm like, Capitol Hill, dildos. Come on, brain. Capitol Hildos. Hildos. Ding, 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 ding. I like it. Interact with the show on Twitter, Ad. What do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the what do we call it podcast, I'm J Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. And SDN.